Hello there, human beings. My name is Amani, also known as your first black girlfriend. And I am sitting down with you today because, you know, sometimes you just gotta do a little DIY. So if you follow me on Instagram, then you know that I recently moved. My hubby and I just closed on our first home. It's beautiful, it's amazing. I love it very, very, very much. I worked very hard for it. I'm very happy to have it. We've been mostly busy working, so we haven't had a whole lot of time to unpack let alone do the renovations that it needs and add the little things that we want. But today, today I am finally building something that we have been talking about since we first saw the house. And that is adding a little bar station. So we lucked out and we got a really great house that has both a formal dining room and an eat-in kitchen. That being said, we just don't really see a point for it. There's not really a point in having a formal dining room and then also putting another table in the kitchen to eat at. And then we also have like an island that you can eat at. It's too much, it's too much. What we haven't found though is like a decent place to put our alcohol. <laughs> We also just have like a lot of wine glasses. They're just that kind of gift that everybody gives you once they find out you're engaged. And they're taking up space for items that should actually be there, like cookware and things. So this bar should hopefully be a solution to that. And I figured while I'm making it, why not document the journey and we can see how it turns out. So here we go. So before I started this project, I did a lot of research and I decided it was best to go ahead and build the bar using a two by four Calyx bookshelf from Ikea. After I did that, I decided to go ahead and draw a diagram so I could really visualize and plan the layout of the bar and also decide what all were the features that I wanted to include. Once I'd got my sketch drawn out, I went online and researched for what items could fulfill the features that I wanted the bar to have, and then I priced them all out. I ended up with a rough estimate that my bar would cost me about $130.69 before tax, and I was very happy about that because all similar looking bars that I'd seen online were in the 200s and 300s, and ain't nobody got time for that. I was also very excited that this ended up being the cheaper option because it meant that we got to take a trip to my favorite place in the world, the one, the only, Ikea. Excuse the mess, but this is what I was talking about. You have a formal dining room over here, and then we also have this kitchen island that we've put some stools under so you can sit there as well. So it kind of seems like overkill to then put another table over here in this eat-in dining area. So we've decided that we're gonna turn it into a bar area instead. So the first matter of business was actually the legs. By itself, the bookshelf is a little too short to be an effective bar, so I picked up some six inch legs from Home Depot. They're each about $3, and my first matter of business is going to be painting these so they're ready once the bookshelf is assembled. So I sat down and quickly realized that the staples in the tops of these legs were very heavy duty and could not just easily be pulled out. So I was gonna have to get a butter knife in order to pry these things out of the legs. Once all the legs were destapled, I sanded them down with a medium grit sandpaper just to make sure that they were all even and smooth, and also to get the surface ready for paint because I am going to be painting these legs black. Also, I promise that I am not talking to myself. I'm singing along to the music in the background, although talking to myself is something that I frequently do. Now that my legs have been sanded down, I'm gonna go ahead and give them a coat of black paint. I'm just using a black glossy acrylic paint that I had lying around. It is waterproof, so if for any reason drinks get spilled, God floods the river, these legs will be good to go. All right, so I am done painting the blocks. Um, rest in peace to my nail polish. I will probably end up giving these a second coat, but while they dry, I'm going to start assembling the bookshelf. So let me start by saying that I love assembling Ikea furniture. There's something so fun about it. It has no English in it. It's just pictures. You just have to figure it out. It's like a super advanced 3D puzzle. I absolutely adore it. That being said, this bookshelf was awful to assemble. It was one of those cases where too much simplicity made things difficult. 
Honestly, if this bookshelf had had a few extra steps, if it had been a little bit more complex, then I think it would have been easier to assemble, but it was so simple. It was just pegs and holes. And because of that, there was a huge margin of error. A lot of the holes were too small, so then I had to try and widen them using an L wrench. It was just, it was a huge mess. There was a lot of smacking and banging and hitting and hammering, but eventually I got it put together. So now comes the part with the drill, which also happens to be the least precise, most inaccurate part of the tutorial. So bear with me. Basically, I was just taking my legs and lining them up to about where I wanted them on the shelf. And then I was very firmly pressing into the shelf so that that hard screw part on the top of the leg would leave an indent. And that's where I knew that my drill hole needed to be. So then I would line the drill up with the indent and drill a hole right there. Obviously, if you want this to be more accurate, you can go ahead and measure it, but I just was not in the mood. I just, I had no patience. You'll notice that I didn't paint the bottom of the legs, and that is because I planned on putting furniture pads there. The bookshelf comes with eight, but even if it didn't, I would have put furniture pads on anyway, because hashtag hardwood floors. Returning to my drawing, you'll notice that I wanted two of the shelves to have wine glass holders. So I was able to get these wine glass racks on Amazon and they were $13.97 each. <laughs> so I guess I thought it was funny to pretend like I'm in jail. Clearly someone needs to take my camera away, oh my God. So each rack has four holes and that is where you're going to need to make holes in your shelf in order to attach them. The way that I did this is again, not super accurate. I just dipped the end of a paintbrush into some yellow paint and then I stuck that paintbrush end through the holes um, so that they would leave a little yellow dot on the shelf where I needed to go ahead and drill a hole. So you'll notice as I'm drilling that there's actually four holes on that top row instead of two. And that's because the first time I put this rack on, I put it on backwards. So please learn from my mistakes and know that the front is the side with these little hill shapes. This is the front. Do not put it on backwards. Returning to my drawing again, you'll see I wanted wine bottle holders. So I actually ordered these off of the Walmart website. They're made by Better Homes and Gardens and they were $9.88, but I got them on sale and they ended up being like eight bucks each. So I was about to put the bar on its feet so I could go ahead and put the wine dividers in, but the legs just were not as sturdy as I wanted them to be. So I went ahead and put some hot glue in between them just to make sure that they really were strong and gonna support the weight of the bar. I gave the area a quick sweep because there was a lot of sawdust from the drilling I did. And then it was time to put it on its feet. I started putting the wine dividers in and then I remembered that I had some leftover mirrors that I had also purchased from Ikea years ago. And I started decorating and filling the bar up. After filling the bar, it's very important that you have a celebratory fruit tart because your bar came out amazing and you are very pleased. I got super lucky and somewhere in the middle of eating and dancing, I heard Daniel's car pull up. He's here, Daniel's here, I just heard his car. So we gonna see what he thinks about the bar. Look at all this. This is awesome. This is so nice. 
I hope the, sh the IKEA stuff doesn't fall off because of the. Yeah, I was thinking about the that. Vents. This is awesome. I love this. Baby, thank you. The legs look nice too. You did a great oh, job. Oh, this fucking leg. Oh, this oh. leg's leg. What happened? Let me stop recording first. <laughs> <laughs> You're on candid camera! I didn't know. <laughs> Did a great job. Okay, so Daniel likes it. I like it. I think it came out almost exactly like my drawing. I'm so pleased with it. Let's just have a little montage. watching um, please let me know what you think how you think the bar turned out I think that it looks really nice I'm very very proud of it and it also you know was a pretty decent price when you compare to um, other bars built-in bars custom-made bars I'm pretty proud I'm not gonna lie I think I did that let me know if you try to make it yourself. I would love to see what other people's version of this looks like. There's so many different ways that you could customize it if you wanted to get like contact paper or add doors to it. It could end up a million different ways. All right, that is it for me. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and please share it with your thrifty and frugal friends who might find this interesting or might even want to attempt it themselves. And until next time, I'll see you later. Bye.